The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 234. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have Peter Baines, author of Doing Good by Doing Good. Welcome, Peter, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Uh, it's great to be with you. Before we take a deep dive into your book, Doing Good by Doing Good, will you take just a moment to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you personally. Yeah, sure. So it's, I guess it's a bit of a strange journey to be writing about uh, corporate social responsibility, but I, I spent uh, 20 Twenty something years working in the forensic area with New South Wales Police here in Australia, and deployed into areas such as Bali after the bombings, and Thailand after the Southeast Asian tsunami. Worked in Saudi Arabia after some disaster there, and uh, Japan after their devastating uh, earthquake and tsunami. But it was in two thousand and five, working in Thailand, I met a group of children who had all lost their parents and lost their homes, and. I formed a charity called Hands Across the Water to build them a home. And, and it was really that that got me started down this path. And the charity has gone on to achieve some pretty big things and um, quite unique in its operating model and the value of experiences. And, and then I started sharing those experiences with uh, corporates and uh, of different sizes. And that really led to the path that uh, I travel now with uh, providing vi- advice around corporate social responsibility and how to make that a real profit center back to the business. That is excellent. And first off, thank you for sharing that. So let's do this. Let's jump right into your book, um, Doing Good by Doing Good, Why Creating Shared Value is the Key to Powering Business Growth and Innovation, which was made available actually not that long this year, January 2015. And Peter, we're going to move quickly, but our top goal here today is to cover those questions that the listener and the future reader has that they would like to get answered before, you know, buying and, and reading your book. So what was the inspiration behind writing Doing Good by Doing Good? It was actually the the publishers wrote to me and asked me if I'd be interested in writing the book. And uh, uh, they s- saw that uh, I had a unique uh, view on corporate social responsibility and, and how to make it uh, a win back for the organization. And, uh, when considering writing the book, I thought that there was real value in just sharing uh, the learnings that I'd had looking at some uh, case studies that I thought were hugely successful and, and were consistent with the messages that I was, uh, I was writing about and, uh, um, and bringing it all together in a, in a book seemed, seemed to make sense. So you answered this next question a little bit there, but I want to ask it anyway to help you differentiate. Um, And to me, this might be one of the most important questions of the interview because it gives you an opportunity to separate your books from the other billion that'll come out this year. And that's what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Yeah, I think that there's there's certainly some other great uh, uh, books that are in the market now that talk about uh, corporate social responsibility. And and a number of them certainly come from uh, positions of academia and uh, where this one is really a result of uh, what I've done with building the charity and focusing on the value of shared experiences. And it's what has been so successful for us. And then it just makes sense. So it's a real practical guide to how you implement a program, making it quite simple, but making sure you get the returns. And in the book, I clearly identify the pathway from implementation through to return and and explore right through the continuum from someone who doesn't have a program through to implementing shared value within your business and, uh, as I say, looking at case studies along the way so the readers can judge for themselves whether they're in uh, a very small business, whether it's an individual uh, philanthropist looking to make a difference or right through to large businesses to how their strategic investment brings returns back to their organizations. So, Peter, how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this a book that they can jump in, jump out, grabbing information as needed? Or did you really write the book to be read from front to back? Uh, I think it depends upon the interest to, of those that are reading the book. I think it's it's really structured for a couple of groups. It's it's one for those who 
uh, have CSR within their business. And for a lot of businesses that I, I start working with, it'll be their, their CSR is often their corporate social responsibility program is often one of carving off a portion of your net profits at the end of the year and giving it to charity. And my the whole concept of the book is if if that's what you're doing, well, you're leaving money on the table. So there's people the, the book's designed for those that are working in the space now, or their organisation has a corporate social responsibility program, and they want it to be more effective. The second part of the book is um, is written with the the charity leaders in mind who are uh, working with their supporters and their donors who often will have these programs, and that's why they're giving to the charity leaders. And the the message to the charity leaders is if the businesses are not um, implementing these types of programs themselves that are profit centres back to their business, then the charity leaders should be having those conversations with their supporters to help them understand the better way that the investment and the relationship can come about. The, the next part of the book or the, is certainly uh, writes to uh, or speaks to those that are involved in board positions or are looking to be uh, uh, social entrepreneurs in this and how they can set up a business and how they can uh, bring a return uh, back to them through their investment in this space. So Peter, you've started to dive into the book just a little bit, but now I actually want to hand over the mic and allow you to take a deep dive. So we take the next five to eight minutes and and give this this listener, this future reader, a great idea of what your book's all about? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, Wade. It's so the book, it's, as I just said, it, it's really uh, aimed at uh, those four groups of, of readers. So it's the, the those that are already in business, the philanthropists that are giving, the charity sectors, and to, to those who might have a program but want to do it more effectively. And, and what I do is, is explore uh, through the book the various stages of implementing a program and and if they're a business, well, they can follow the stages. If they're a charity uh, leader who wants to bring returns back to those that support them, they too can help them uh, embrace that. And the book starts with the concept in, and we explore why just giving money alone is often not the best thing for the business to, to uh, bring the return back to them. And one of the examples I talk about is if you give, as a business, if you give uh, money alone or you engage in your staff have one day a year volunteering, and I'll come back to the volunteering, but if you give money alone, often it's what I call the, the coffee and cake scenario, where as the, the leader of the business, you will carve off a, a portion of your net profit and you might give it to one or a few charities and uh, often it'll be a uh, the, the charity leader will be invited into the office and uh, there'll be a sharing of, uh, of cake and coffee and there'll be hand, uh, a cheque will be handed over. That will be reported back through the business, uh, either through email, through the internet or through some newsletter that this is what happened and as a company we gave X amount of money today to the charity. But for the vast majority of those within the business, well, their experience has been very little. They haven't uh, seen the return. They haven't enjoyed the the, the experience, and, and it can be like a warm bath. It feels good at the time, but you get out, and not long after, the, the, the value of it's gone. So we talk about what currently exists and then what can be done to build more meaningful experiences and, and step the organisations uh, through that and what kind of returns they can be looking for. And, and to help the, the businesses align more closely with their charity partners or if they're indeed setting up charity partners, uh, setting up a new program, one of the things that we, we explore is putting in place a set of guiding principles so that there's alignment between the business values and the charity partner because it's really important that this be something of uh, a relationship not just a one-way uh, donation of money. When we look at the, uh, the the guiding principles that we put in place, we put in we examine some some real important issues that the businesses should be considering in their charity partners. So, what type of uh, spend do they ha have out of the dollar on administration and fundraising? What type of transparency do they have? What type of 
uh, board is constituted within the charity and do the, that real due diligence upon the charity partners to make sure that the relationship they're getting into is one that they're not going to be compromised by and there is the returns that are there. We look at the model of investing for, for, with fewer for longer. So rather than giving uh, the, the throwing it open to the organisation and saying, well, well, we'll match dollar for dollar and uh, there might be uh, 30 or 40 different charities that are supported through the business, that there's no multiplier effect. There's no, uh, no real story that can be told of giving X amount of dollars to 30 or 40 charities. If you reduce that down and you have a strategy that might be international, national and local and you select three charity partners and there's a commitment for a longer period of time, then we can start to bring about some stories. And the stories are so important to, to build this level of engagement to create the initial shared experience. So we talk about, well, with those three uh, charity partners, the international, national and local, for example, and we, we share the dollar uh, that's been raised three ways or it might be that you take on one audacious goal and that receives 50 cents out of the dollar and the two other charity partners receive 25 cents. And that big audacious goal, that gives you the story, that gives you the but for that uh, at the end of the two-year arrangement or two-year two relationship, you're able to say, this is what we're able to achieve and but for our support, that wouldn't have happened. So we go through those various um, uh, strategies of how to bring the businesses together and, and how to make that relationship Quite successful. We look at a number of case studies and I'll quickly take you through one of them that explains the value and the opportunities that are outside just purely giving money. So I built a program for the uh, Sheraton Grand Hotel in Sukhumvet in, in Thailand. It's a leading hotel in Thailand. It's a business hotel. It's um, it, it had in place a, uh, a CSR program of some, descri some description in that as a guest, when you were checking out, you were asked to leave $1 uh, attached to the bill. Now, my question uh, back to the general manager was, how does he think his guests feel about making that $1 donation? And he said, well, there's no feeling at all. It's quite neutral. It's a dollar. It doesn't impact. I said, how about the guests that receive the, uh, the, 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 the hotel staff that are processing the dollar? How do they feel? He said, well, the same. There's no impact upon them. I said, what's the impact in the local community? He said, well, none that we know of. I said, what about overall? He said, well, several uh, tens of millions of dollars uh, have been raised in the, the life of this program. So it's certainly effective, but there's no engagement. There's no shared experience. So we looked at the, the hotel guests and his frequent hotel guests were staying there between two and three nights per visit staying there eight to ten times a year. Most of them senior business people, certainly um, have a lot of expertise that uh, some might not even recognise. We surveyed the guests and through invitation we invited them to be part of a mentoring program where they would then mentor a charity leader from within that local area in Bangkok in business development. So we invited the guests who were part of this program. We said, would you be be prepared to do this mentoring, stay an extra half a day per visit. And they said, yes, of course. So the immediate return back to the hotel was that they were staying an additional night per visit. So their, their spend uh, per stay went up between 50 and 100% each time they uh, travelled to Bangkok. While they're travelling on their international flight to Bangkok, what they're most excited about is this mentoring program. They're then speaking with the person sitting next to them on the plane, tells them about this program. The person next to them says, I'd like to be part of that, but I stay at Shangri-La. And they say, well, you'll have to stay at Sheraton Grand. So then it attracted new business. What it did is it retained the loyalty and the patronage of those current hotel guests. Uh, it, it, it created a, a brand differentiation between the other hotels within Sukhumvet and it really made a difference to the guests that were staying there. So we look at it and we say, well, what was the cost to the hotel? Well, there was none other than the facilitation of the program. So then we went to the uh, went to the staff of the hotel and asked them to be involved in part of the program and they would need to volunteer 
one day per month to facilitate the program. And, of course, because it was making that difference to their local community, they all jumped on board. And and this is an example of a program where it was a highly effective corporate social responsibility program, but it involved no money from the hotel to the community. But the difference it made was hugely uh, sustainable. It brought about real development of the charity leaders, which allows them to operate their charities better. And all of the key performance indicators that we put in place for the program were met and they were easy to measure. And it's one of the hardest things in in an effective CSR program is measuring across the three areas of of the inputs, the outputs, and the impact. And the impact is the often uh, the most challenging thing to measure because sometimes you're you're doing things, uh, putting in place programs that are, avoid things happening. So educating at-risk uh, youth, for example, through a program, you might divert them um, out of the criminal justice system and help them remain in school. And that's a program that I uh, talk about in the book with a telco here in Australia called Optus, a program that they had in place. And, and it's go through the book around the, the measurements and and uh, how you can do that. The, the final part of the book is exploring in, in, in some way the, this concept of shared value. And it's a concept that was originated out of the States uh, through uh, Mr. Porter and Kramer. And, um, and I just look at it and, and uh, explore how it exists here in, in various case studies. And, and there's various names for it. We can have it called conscious capitalism, shared value, or, or a more engaged giving. And I think that kind of sums up Wade, what the whole book is about is being more engaged in the entire process and it takes you through these various layers, whether you're an entrepreneur, a small, medium or large business, is looking at how your corporate social responsibility can be built on shared experiences that will deepen the engagement and bring the returns around uh, the increased morale within the business, staff retention, becoming more attractive as an employer. And, and the book goes through all of those type of typical HR returns that you should be looking for. So, Peter, you did a fantastic job of breaking down this book. And, and so first off, thank you for that. And now uh, I'm going to ask you to break it down even a step further and kind of ask you a personal question about the book and that if the reader can only take away one concept, principle or action item out of everything you just discussed with us, and basically your entire book, what would you personally want that to be? That your giving should be a positive return back to you, either as an individual or as an organisation. And and that, that it can be a bit confronting for people to start with. They say, but I don't do it for that reason. I don't do it for, for myself to benefit. I do it for the right thing. But here's the magic in it, Wade, is that if you benefit either as an individual who's giving as an organisation or a larger company, if you benefit, there's more. It's more likely you'll do more of it, and you'll do it more often. And and therefore, it's in the benefit of the charity leader of the charity you're supporting, the one that you're so passionate and connected with. It's their. It's in their interest for you to have a positive return. So it, 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 that would be the one message: is find a way. Uh, through shared experiences for you to have a positive return in your giving because it's in the interest of those that you love and care and support of in the charities. Uh, it's in their interest for you to take a positive, have a positive experience out of it all. So, Peter, you said a lot of things I think will break down paradigms uh, that people have, maybe make a shift in the way that they actually think. And this next thing, you know, people love quotes because they do the same thing. They help create a paradigm shift sometimes. So do you have a favorite quote from your book something that you wrote that you feel like will resonate with people. And we take a minute to explain what it means to you. Yeah, I think it's uh, mine is, uh, and I often write it inside the book when I'm, when I'm signing them, is uh, if we do nothing, then nothing will change. And, um, and I think that, that can be on whatever level. If you're looking to be involved in the charity, well, and you don't do it, well, there's nothing's going to change for you. If your giving is is not much more than a tax at the moment, if it's just carving off a share of your profit, and if you do nothing to change that, well, nothing will change. So I think it's about uh, uh, taking action, and and certainly the clarity comes with the action that you take. And and a lot of the time, some of these things we don't 
we don't know what the, the, the answers are going to be when we start something quite audacious, but uh, um, we don't even know what the questions will, will be either. But taking that action leads us there. And so for me, it's the, that uh, if we do nothing, well, nothing will change. Excellent. And that's something that we're going to put at the show notes at the elpodcast.com because we know that a lot of our entrepreneurs that are listening today are, are driving, working out, doing something mobile. And so they have an opportunity to go back and actually look at that. And Peter, we're going to step away from your book for just a second. We're going to ask you that, uh, uh, not for any book recommendation, but, but the book recommendation. So if there was only one book you could recommend based on the way that it's impacted your life, maybe created a lifestyle shift or a paradigm shift, what book would you suggest to the listener? Oh, gee, I think that um, um, there was a book, uh, uh, struggling with the name of it at the moment, but uh, written by uh, Demboisa Moyo, and uh, it was about uh, the giving and, and uh, uh, in Africa and the impact that uh, charities had, and, uh, um, and it just talked about uh, um, giving in an unstructured way and the, the impact that we can have when we... Uh, just give to communities without structure. And what was that? How do you how do you uh, pronounce his last name, or how do you spell it? I'm sorry. Uh, the the author's name is spelled D A M B I S A. Her surname is M O Y O. Dead Aid. And it's why aid is not working, and how there is another way for Africa. And it was a a really interesting and provoking uh, book for those that uh, are certainly working in this space. Excellent. Very good. Yeah, I pulled that up myself. Well, fantastic. That, this is the first time that book's actually been recommended to us. So I love, I love hearing about new books. And Peter, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also get more information on your book, Doing Good by Doing Good? Yeah, just through my website, which is peterbaines.com.au. And uh, that uh, covers all of the work that I do. And there's links through to the book as well. Perfect. Well, Peter, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us today. Uh, My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Wade. All the best. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Peter or his book, Doing Good by Doing Good, check out the show notes at theelpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to theelpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.